practically speaking, before you post anything, consider the audience, right. how that would be received. If you weren't in the industry that you're in and you just saw this post, is this like, oh, here goes Red again, bragging on himself? Right, right. Or is it like, oh, wait, that is so cool that Rhett was able to help and to serve this client. I'm Rhett. And I'm Brandon. And, and we're, we're the House Dads. Dads. Because we're dads who sell houses. But we're also husbands, business owners, sports freaks, Christians, friends, marketing nerds, TV show bingers, and so many more things. Like so many of you, we're just trying to do it all. And we're trying to do it well. And that's what we're here to talk about. Welcome to House Dads, episode five. Excited that you guys are here. It's going to be a great one. We're going to be one that I... Uh, I was uh, really excited to do. Um, I, I think that it may have a wide cast net here because um, no matter what industry you're in, uh, there, there's this struggle, this tension, if you will, about kind of bragging on yourself on social media, yep. like kind of posting your stats, posting your accomplishment, your sales, or whatever it is to, grain, to gain credibility, but not sacrifice your humility. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. And, uh, you know, Rhett's got a pretty recent example, uh, especially at the end of the year. It's natural for all yep. the realtors to kind of post their stats. Yes. And so uh, Rhett just recently did so, and it kind of dusted up a little controversy. Yeah, man, so. some, uh, some drama. Uh, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge that my shirt is wrinkled. Um, hey. It kind of takes the embarrassment out when you acknowledge it. So my shirt is wrinkled, everybody, I know. Glad um, you made that disclaimer. Yes, thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it's uh, the I got a little little Facebook drama over this past weekend, uh, and it wasn't necessarily in regards to the stats, but it just so happened to be on that post, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and I guess I don't want to I don't want to disrespect anyone's name. So if, if right. they listen, of course I want to respect them, even though I didn't agree with a lot of things they said. All names have been hidden to protect. All the names, yeah, yeah, all that stuff. So yeah. all that to say, um, you know, there was a comment. It was taken down, but the person still felt the need to DM me expressing their opinion. But one of their opinions at the end of it. Uh, and I'm a type that like when, when something happens, I try to get any out, any ounce of like learning opportunity, yeah, absolutely. even if I you don't should. agree with it. I'm like, yep. all right, how can I learn from this? Um, and, and that's what I did. So at the end of this DM, it was just a sidebar, but they mentioned, Hey, uh, and just to let you know, man to man, it's pretty tacky for you to post your, uh, if you're not familiar, realtors at the end of the year, like to post their stats, what, right. what volume amount they sold, how many families they helped however in detail they want to go. Right. So his statement was, uh, it was pretty tacky to post your, your income basically, because anyone right. that knows simple math and real estate percentages, they can tell what you made tacky to, to share that with social media. I'll never refer you all this kind of stuff, you yeah. know? And again, uh, got real I, personal. I could, I could have went into like, Hey, let's talk about business for a second. Like there's business expenses, there's taxes, there's splits. So, but either way, uh, a lot of different things. Yes. It's not like, Oh, you just get to keep yeah. all that. Wow. You get to keep $18 million. Yeah. Like, no, every single penny. It's not yeah, but either it's way, not works. Uh, again, I looked for the learning opportunity for right. it. Right. And I thought like, is it, you know, the, the general perception of people, right. Because at the end of the day, I think a lot of realtors probably post their stats as, as a way to gain a little credibility with yeah. not only the people out there, but like our, our industry. Yeah. I think putting your amount of families or transactions that you do and families that you help helps. But at the end of the day, I feel like people don't really have a good grasp on volume. No, I don't think you know? so. So I feel like yeah. that aspect, people, all that to say. It's a little bit more tangible. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was already kind of in doubt about posting it. Um, you know, I think getting into the team leader realm, I'm kind of like, Hey, I want to root on my team, not right. kind of section me off from that. Right. But at the end of the day, I posted it. Yeah. Um, so it, you know, it led to the question, is that, is it tacky to do? Is it bad? Did you post yours? I did. You I did? did. Yeah. And it's the, the same thoughts that go through your mind when you post it, go through mine. Yeah. Because like I, I see pros and cons to each. Like I remember being a newer agent and, and seeing people post numbers that I'm like, man, I'm never going to be able to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. So I'm hesitant or embarrassed to even post mine. Right. right. But then I wanted to do it because I'm like, well, at least I'm doing better than them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Transparently. Right. right? Yeah, like yeah. that's what I was doing is, is, you know, this comparison game. And then now later in my business and in different places, I don't want the attention to necessarily be on me. I want it to be around the group. Right. Um, and, and so I find myself thinking about creative ways to say it yep. without directly saying it yeah. because I don't want to sacrifice my humility. I still want to, uh, 
I, I still want it to not be about me, but be about everybody else. Yeah. And so it's a really, uh, it's a really interesting to try, interesting thing to try and figure yeah. out. But I think we have to think about what is there to gain from it mm-hmm. for actually posting it. So like at the end of the day, we both did it. Why do you think we did it? Right. And so it kind of goes in the topic. Like I feel like a big reason that we do it is to gain credibility. Right. Right. So the topic that we're going to be discussing is how do you grow your credibility without sacrificing the humility side right. that we, we try and we grind so hard to get. Right. Right. Uh, so for, yeah, for me, I think it was a big part was, Hey, I, I, I am a, I love to recap the year right. just to kind of reflect on, Hey, this was my goal. Did I hit it? Did I not? I right. mean, we're in a sales position. You have to right. kind of look at things like that, have but to. also it's also a sign of like just being grateful for the year that you had because of the other people that trust in you. So for me, I can't speak for you. I, a big reason for me to post that was like to get credibility from the 100%. Groups. Like when they see a, wow, he helped 54 people last year. It's a big deal. I, I know he's got some, some experience under his belt. Right. You know? Right. And we've all said it that, you know, experience in any industry doesn't necessarily come in time in the industry, but it's, it's the amount of people that you have served, the amount of transactions, the amount of things that you've seen. Cause that experience comes through not time, you know, linear wise, it yeah. comes through, the actual deals, the actual effort, the actual people that you've helped. Yes. And so it, it is big. And, and I think a lot of people choose to do business with you because of that reason. Yeah. So that's one thing that we looked into of like, why do people choose the agent? Uh, and I tried to go pretty big. Of sure. course, we're coming from the lens of realtor right. and real estate. Uh, tried to look at like how people choose who they do business with. Right. There's a service industry, there's a product industry, but uh, focusing on like the service industry, we kind of looked into why or how do people choose who they choose to transact with. Right. Uh, and there was a pretty overwhelming theme. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, the theme was that they heard about them, they were referred to them because right. of the credibility that they established. Exactly. And one of the biggest positives is that when you do, you know, put your stats out there now, and if you don't know this, uh, the interesting thing about realtors, and it's not like this in every industry is that we can find each other's stats, you know, in 15 (laughs) seconds. Right. And so I've actually seen, and this is some of the negative side, I've seen folks post something on Facebook that they actually didn't do. Right. And so, uh, some things like that can get a little, uh, twisted. And I think a lot of people do that. Or if people do that, it's because they're just trying to measure up and they're comparing right. and they feel a little embarrassed. And, and that's one thing that I want to say with that is that those numbers can be deceptive and those numbers can lie. Yep. Right. And mm-hmm. so they don't always tell the whole story because it, you know, uh, a certain amount of volume to somebody could be exactly what they need to do. Yep. Right. It could yep. be exactly the capacity they have. It could be the, the, the exactly amount of business they want to help right. and, and amount of people they want to help. And so it can be deceptive. Right. Right. And so that's also part of the struggle is like, okay, well I post my volume, but I'm so much more proud of somebody who did less than me because that's the most that they've ever done mm-hmm. or something to that yep. nature. And so it can be deceptive, but again, um, people, when I think about, other industries that I choose to do business with. I like that I've seen them on my Facebook from my friends and my friends of friends. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, Oh man, these folks have done business with all of my friends and all of these people. And they've got a long and proven track record. I want to do business with them. as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, side sidebar and and fun story. One time years ago, you see all the time people going on Facebook and asking like, Hey, can anyone recommend this or that? That's like the classic. It's amazing. Uh, you don't want to do go on, (laughs) go on Facebook and say, can anyone recommend a A realtor? realtor. So I did it myself one time, like as a realtor, Hey, can anyone recommend a realtor? Yeah. I literally, I literally got people like recommending other people. Oh yeah. Realtors. And I was like, dang, I yeah. guess they went over their head. Yeah. My uh, favorite is when I see you've been tagging a post on Livingston Parish <laughs> rants and raves. Uh, I know exactly what it is. It, don't stop doing it. It means uh, the world to us. Yeah, yeah. Right. But it's just hilarious it's, because there's a hundred comments yeah. of different realtors below. It's always us. humbling to be tagged in those. No, it but is. you you one hundred percent know, man, there's hundreds. I say hundreds, there's like dozens of other realtors. Do you usually message the person who did the post? I usually message them. I do too. I'll I shoot my shot. Quick. I'll just yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'll say s- I know you're bombarded. Yep. Yep. Same, same like mine here. Yeah. I go the, the relatability <laughs> approach. Right. Some of them I don't, uh, because in the day people that kind of ask that you can kind of do some digging. I'm like, all right, maybe that's Man, not something that, that, so that would take a lot of time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, you tend to, to work with who you, who you are recommended by, from, right. like by 
your friends, your family, they all did something and you want to hear how their experience went and they went, well, they, they recommend that person. So we tend to do business with, uh, you hear the saying who we know, who right. we like and who we trust. So right. we, it's very, very important to grow your credibility. Right. Uh, but there's, there's a way to grow it without being humble and there's yeah. a way to grow it with keeping your humility. Yeah. There's definitely drawbacks there. And I think, you know, that's one of the biggest things is how do you maintain your humility while you're essentially bragging on yourself? Right. And it's about making it more than about yourself. Yeah. That's what it all is. It mm-hmm. comes down to when you are posting these kind of things is making sure that the post isn't, Hey, look at me and all that I've accomplished. It's, I was able to accomplish this because of everybody else. And, uh, you and I were talking about this before. Um, and I'll probably ruffle some feathers with this one and I'll do a little Ooh, sports talk. Let's but do it. Tom Brady. Oh, okay. okay. I already ruffled. Some people are triggered. <laughs> He's the goat. When it comes to actual statistics and Super Bowls and all these different things, but when it comes to leadership, just from what I've observed as observed as an innocent bystander watching on TV, man, when I look at his leadership skills compared to some other leadership skills, I think that this kind of epitomizes this debate or, or what we're talking about today about not sacrificing your humility. I mean, I watched Drew Brees and Sean Payton resurrect the Saints uh, franchise after Katrina. And one thing that I noticed about every post game interview that drew ever did is that like when they lost, it was always his fault. He always took blame and said, I had to play better. Yeah. I missed that throw. I made this mistake. And when they won, it was never his fault, right? Yeah. It was always everybody else. Yeah. And so I feel like if drew was a realtor, yeah, he probably put us to shame, but <laughs> He would, he would have that post of, hey, this is what I did this year, right? right? But it wasn't because of me. It was because of all the people around me. And where I see Tom complaining about his O-lineman and his receiver dropping this pass and all these different things, whether it's in the public eye or not, I see the ranting and I see the raving and I see the yelling at everybody else where it's like, but, hey, when he wins, it's your boy. He yep. did it. And yep. all this different, you know, hey, look, I know he's a good guy and he mm-hmm. helps a lot of people and all different stuff. But I just kind of noticed some of those leadership differences. And I think it's similar when we talk about our real estate business. Mm-hmm. And, again, it's a, it's a hard balance because, again, staying with the sports theme, one of my least favorite players, oh, this is – here this is go. a very sensitive topic. I don't, I don't want to like, yeah. yeah. Uh, one of my least favorite players while he was playing was Kobe Bryant. Oof. Yeah, that's because he was rip. so cocky. Yeah. But he was so confident in his ability right. to, to perform. Right. And it wasn't until he retired that I like, I heard interviews I'm like, man, this dude is like, he's incredible. Yeah. He, he was able to bring people up, bring the best. But, so the, all that to say, like he was very confident. He came across cocky. He gained some credibility because right. of that, like, you know, ability he had to kind of, yeah. Speak highly of himself. Yeah. You take the ball when it, when it mattered. And I think you're right, too. Like, that confidence is key because I think, you know, it, in whatever industry you're in, when you start debating or questioning whether I should do this or do that or do this, I'm telling you that I think that you need to be confident in who you are and what you've done because the people that you're going to attract the kind of people that, that, that want to work with you. Right. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like, you know, the way that we've kind of built our businesses and our brands is to be approachable. Yeah. Um, you know, but professional and that we do have experience and have done the things that we've done, but also not very much look at me type of personalities. Yeah. But then there's other people in the industry that, that may be very much different than us. And there's going to be particular people that want to work. Yep. with them and yep. then there's going to be other folks that uh, what I'm saying is own who you are for sure you know what I mean own who you are and it may be different than the way that we do it but don't be embarrassed or disappointed with how you do it yeah it's uh it's the line that you hear so much I need to come up with a better one just because I'm tired of hearing it but like your vibe attracts your tribe right? that's good I actually <laughs> you heard that before I don't know man I'm not as hip as you you've oh my goodness I've seen it on the back of like so many dr- gym I seriously am a boomer like, you know that like, you, you I have a lot of tendencies. boomer tendencies well you, you okay well if you're here for the first time <laughs> take it your vibe attracts your tribe I like right? it I might you're need going to, to attract down. your your clientele <laughs> right. your demographic that wants to work with you at the end of the day I mean I don't know about you I don't get buyers exclusive sign like right. people that say when they want to buy a house like you have to use me because yeah. i'm of the like mindset if you don't want to use me like i don't want to force someone to do it right so we want to work with people who want to work 100 percent. so same so i guess practically speaking how do we how do you develop a humility the me yeah like sense? how do you like, how do you forward face yeah yeah and like how, that to how do you establish that how do you build a business off of you know, like what are some practical well and, and i guess um tell you this quick story first like i uh 
just yesterday I had somebody text me and they said, Hey, my wife told me to give you a call. Uh, we're looking to sell our house and, and, uh, a piece of land and, uh, hopped on the phone with them later. I was like, Hey man, uh, have we met before or anything like that? He said, well, uh, you and my wife, uh, went to high school together. We kind of know each other and stuff like that. And she said that you were the guy to call. And, uh, every single time I get like a call like that or a text like that, it's like, man, I'm doing something right. Yeah. And absolutely. it's just being who, who we are. Mm-hmm. Right. And, 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 and I think that it's hard to fake humility. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Like I think that you either kind of are or not. Yeah. Um, but I think that I know that I, where I would be without the people that have helped me get to where I am. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy for me to, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but then at the same time, it's, 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 uh, it's just continuing to be grateful for each and every call that you do get like that. Yeah. Um, that, that keeps me with that proper perspective that when I do go to post, um, a, a moment that I am proud of, I'm not proud of it because I did it. I'm proud of the people who are around me, who have helped me to achieve it. And so I think practically speaking, before you post anything, before you put anything out, it's like consider the audience, right. consider how that would be received. Right. If you weren't in the industry that you're in and you just saw this post, is this like, oh, here goes Red again, bragging on himself. Right, right. Or is it like, oh wait, that is so cool that Rhett was able to help and to serve this client yeah. that way, you know? So consider the way that it would be received yeah. and that'll help how you're framing it, what you're typing and things like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it sounds corny, but like people notice your, your lifestyle. Yeah. Like if you are not even posting about your business, but your family, your, your spouse, like they're going to notice your, your demeanor through that. So it starts with that. Right. I think so too. Uh, but yeah, I think, um, one thing that I mentioned here is like, you never want to make yourself the hero, uh, of the story. It's good. Right. Like yeah. you want the other person, uh, genuinely you want the other person to be the hero. So right. rather than posting, I sold this house. It's like, Hey, I was able to help this person who was going through a hard time, who needed to sell, who wanted their first house. Either way, just right. make them make Tell the story, story about them. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to, you know, go leaps and bounds. A hundred percent. And I think any time in a transaction, uh, in any type of post, like <laughs> I want to use my words carefully here. <laughs> I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but I don't, I don't necessarily mind it. But in your post, when you're talking about something that happened well, if you have to victimize somebody else mm. in the post, yeah. or if you have to say like, Hey, I got one over on this one. Yeah. I did this and I did. It's like, Hmm. Okay, so like th- there truly are, you can create win-win scenarios for folks, Yeah. right? You don't have to say, well, I won for my client because that other person lost. Right. It's like, yeah, we can just <coughs> create some wins where yeah. we don't have to drag somebody else. Yeah, don't even mention. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It doesn't need to be. And so that's where I think that people can lend to try and make themselves the hero as opposed to somebody else. Yeah. What do you think, put you on the hot seat, and uh, what do you think about <laughs> closing photos yeah. with uh, a big sign that says you, you sold a house? Do you do those? I do. Which I don't, again, I don't think there's anything wrong. My analysis, people are going to learn this about me. Analysis, paralysis, brain, I think okay. way too much into things. Okay. I have almost done that. I'm like, wait, I don't want people to like, I want this to be about them. Right. But it also, yes. it's, it's marketing. It's like, there's so, a weird line about that, right? So uh, definitely a weird line behind that. <laughs> And uh, you really put me on the hot seat. We yeah. should have talked about this before <laughs> because one of my Christmas gifts from my wife oh, was a again, sign. Again, I like it. I see it. No, yeah, yeah. Now you're trying to backtrack. It, but again, so, I think, okay, yeah, yeah. Go. No, please. So this is what, uh, so she got me this beautiful key. Like it was custom made yeah. and stuff like that and engraved in wood. And it said, yeah, it says sold and it's got my real estate mm-hmm. sign or whatever on the, my website on there. And so she would uh, mess with me because I'd take a couple closing photos and not have it and leave uh, it in my car. Like, really Seriously, that. yeah, it's like, uh, where's the photo? Yeah. And so I would get it sometimes and sometimes I wouldn't. And, and maybe sometimes I could even be better about branding and thinking mm-hmm. those things through. That's why I'm glad we're doing this together. You probably think about things too much and I think about them too little. <laughs> we complement each other so well. With yeah, that. but but uh, yeah, so I, I, I do it both ways. And I think that goes back to the credibility or the, uh, the post of like posting your stats. Right. Like, one of the things that we talked about is like, it's okay to post those things. And I'm playing devil's advocate. I've no, done it plenty of times. Yeah. I'm not knocking that at all. Yeah. But it's like how you, how you 
like post it. Like, what are you saying when you post it? Exactly. Like, I did this, y'all. Like, look at me. I sold it. But no, you, you may have the sign in there, but your words and your demeanor. That's right. At home, it, change, it frames it. People don't even think twice about it. 100%. Like, they're not like, oh, why is he holding that key up? It's like, no. Yeah. So I know that the initial conversation we had talking about this, like derived from your post of stats, and then it went a different route by somebody saying, I would never post my stats in whatever industry they're in and anything like that. We don't have to get into that, but <laughs> how did you handle, I mean, I'm sure your initial, initial reaction was like, come on, bro. Oof. like catch me outside. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's like, how did you handle that? You know, I feel like you and I both take away from it that like, we want to try to be able to redeem any situation. And you did, you're like, okay, what can I learn from this? Yeah. But how did you handle that conflict or confrontation with him? Yeah. To sum it up, uh, I responded with humility. Yep. But no, to, to no, kind of give it. you a deeper dive of it, uh, yes, when you initially get that. So I got that that comment on a Friday night. I was about to go to bed. Oh, so I read it worst. right before bed. And yeah. I didn't know any sort of context of where it was coming from. And I got context the next morning. But needless to say, I lost I lost a little sleep that night. Yeah. Because I do have the, just, you know, you naturally have the desire for, peop, for people to like you. That's right. right? And right. when you hear of a blatant, I don't like you. Yeah you know, you start to get That's a little hurt. insecure about it. So yeah, I lost a little sleep that night. I absolutely could have responded that night and, yeah. and kind of went at like, who, who are you to come, you know, just yeah. kind of the, the flesh in yeah. me to like catch me outside type yeah. of thing. Uh, thankfully I'm mature enough to <laughs> discern, Hey, I need to sleep on this. Yeah. Or attempt to sleep on this. Yeah. Process it. Uh, but yeah, the next morning I responded and it started, it was a tough morning because it was like, of course I lost a little sleep and it was still fresh in my mind. I responded with the, the route of, I'm so sorry you, you feel that way. Uh, I did not build my business on, on what you're saying. And I certainly am not going to start doing that. Right. Uh, and I, I kind of, uh, spoke to his, one of his other comments about a certain neighborhood, kind of told him my experience about it. Uh, but, and then I encouraged, look, I, um, here's my phone number. I'm not hard to find. Oh, it's uh, awesome. I'm on, I'm on, I'm a realtor. So yeah. here's my number just in case you can't find it. Yeah. Feel free to call me if you ever want to chat. Yeah. So it started off, the morning started off pretty rough of like mind boggling, like, ah, why, yeah. what's going on? But man, the rest of the day was incredible yeah. because people saw that the algorithm pumped it back up. They saw that post. They saw my response. People were supporting me left and right, whether it be liking the comment. Oh, no, I saw you. like One of the agents in my office was like, did you see Rhett's post? Yeah. And you had like 40 likes on your people comment. Were, it was people great. were even going out of their way to like reach out to me, text, call, and like, yeah. hey, just to let you know, what in the world? Like yeah. they were speaking for my character That's because right. they knew it from the start. Right. That's right. Uh, and I got a second chance. So when he DM'd me, I had a second chance to go tick for tack on exactly. back and forth. Again, right. slept on it. I yep. actually spoke to another person to get sort of like Good, counsel on how to yeah. uh, respond. I responded short and sweet and humble. I was like, hey man, man, you. I think that's a recipe for all of it. Short and sweet, humble. Yeah. And that you don't feel like you have to win. Yeah. Man, because the, the thing inside of us that creates this, what they have to win is that yeah. pride. Yep. Right. And so I always say, man, you take the high road because it's far less traveled. Mm -hmm. So I know that's a little of a side about whether you post your stats or not, but I think the common three theme through all of this is just kind of trying to stay humble. Yeah. Right. Is that we do celebrate our wins, but yeah, have to celebrate them with a grateful heart. Yeah. And it's a long play. Like you have to just have humility ingrained in every aspect of your life, not just your business. Right. If you just keep it in your business, people are going to notice that, like you 100%. say, that's, that's something they notice. But yeah, it starts, it starts at home. It starts yeah. with your mindset. Yeah. So overlying, you say going forward, you're going to continue to post your stats. When you think about next year, do you do it now? Like as a team, do you keep posting yourself individually? Yeah. Does it change what you're going to do next year? after you? So have this again, you're going to learn this, the analysis paralysis. I, I'm You've already thinker. been thinking about that. One of my goals this year is to make decisions quicker, make, yeah. uh, make decisions quicker, more decisions to make them quicker. Um, so, and you've already saw memes this year about like people, here's my stats, nobody cares. Here's what I sold, nobody knows. Like, it's just because it's a common thing now. Right, right. So will I do it again? I don't know. I think yeah. I think I kind of have the mindset of like, this is my last year to do personal. I yeah. think next year I'm going to be much more about, um, you know, kind of pumping up the team because like as it. a team leader, I need to pump them up and, uh, and, and 
boast. Exactly. You want to say it, boast about them and, them and their successes. So yep. I'll probably go the team route. Take the year. Drew Brees approach. Yeah. I like that. Yep. Well, I think, um, I, I think kind of in conclusion, I think for anybody listening, um, you know, if you're newer in your field or your industry and specifically in real estate, don't get discouraged when you see somebody who's been in the business for years and years, or even if they hit it big one year yeah. and, and you're hesitant to post your stats, if you want to post them, do it. Right. I know that two of them, two, us two up here will be celebrating you. Absolutely. That's what you wanted to do. And, and, and I think the, all, the, the, the core of it all is being authentic and being humble and uh, continuing to serve and put other people before yourself. And that's going to what that's going to end up what's taking care of you in the long run. Yeah, so. absolutely. Doing everything with a grateful heart is going to, uh, you know, take away any sort of doubt of the. That's it. Yeah. Zig Ziglar said that if you help enough people get what they want, then you will be able to get what you want. Oof. Yep. Ziggy. Zig Ziglar hitting Love him it. with it at the end. So look, anything else you want to add? Oh, I think that's good. Okay, cool. Well, look, thank you guys so much for joining us as always on Spotify and iTunes and YouTube, all of it. Click it on the subscribe, <laughs> all the buttons. Do all and that things like and comment that. And yeah, please look, interact with us. Yep. DM us um, and all that different stuff. Like I said, I got boomer tendencies. You may have to message me once or twice, but I promise I'll get to it. Red will probably respond right away. Right away. Yeah. yeah, my wife will show me how. No, but seriously, thank you guys so much for being here. We'll catch you next time.